Thank the Lord. Please don't let there be a phase two. Please. Would now be a bad time to oh, tell you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I really do hope you're well. In today's video, I've got something very special for you. At least it's something very special for me. I've recently reached out to a fellow PSO content creator known as Section Skylight, and we agreed to put our heads together uh, in a space that we're both very, very passionate for and kind of create something a little bit different. In this video, you're going to see him ultimately take me through episode two, uh, carry me for a majority of it, and kind of give his insight as well as mine into the background of PSO, the background of how we started PSO. And overall, there's just a lot of laughs, a lot of deaths, uh, and it's just a good time. So if you do enjoy these sort of videos, please do leave a like, subscribe if you are new here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I was thinking to myself today, actually, I was just like, I don't really know what I'm getting myself in for because you're really good and like really in the know of this game. And I'm just kind you of like that. this, well, I'm just kind of like this like old bald guy that kind of appreciates Fantasy Star. And I feel like you're just like, I don't know, you're like my carer for the evening or something. <laughs> kind of, like like in your throat. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. <laughs> exactly that. So have you ever had much downtime then from like Finia? Have you ever, did you sort of, intentionally set up playing like fantasy star universe and ngs just to give yourself a bit of variation or have you always been sort of fairly consistent and solid on one game really so particularly with pso i've always kind of been in and out of it so obviously near the time when it released i was on it pretty much religiously yeah. um you know pretty much constantly on it but i think over the years i've been more it's more or less like on off really so i'll find other games that i play for a while and then after that, I'll find myself itching to go back to PSO again. Unfortunately, this time, the um, the urge to stop playing hasn't really happened, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is for me, I've I've normally got like a... It's almost like a three-day rule. Like, I tend to play most games like that I really, really enjoy for like three days consistently. And then I get to that third day, and I'm like, wow, I just feel super burnt out, and I'm not really interested in this anymore. But this is just like, yeah, this yeah. has not happened with PSO, like, at all. I don't know what <laughs> it was, but, like, when I first started playing Affinia, which was, like, four years ago, and when I said started playing it, I, mean, I think I got to, like, level 15 or something like that, just on my own. I had no idea that I could join a party with someone. It was tragic. And um, okay. I kind of just, like, put it down. And this is the first, like, proper time that I've actually come back to it. Um, oh, it's good. Okay. And... I just haven't stopped. Like, I realize I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I can hear like the rare drop sound sometimes. And I'm like, this is not normal. I shouldn't be thinking about these things. I'm 30 and I'm engaged. I shouldn't be thinking about these things in the slightest. Just dreaming about red boxes. I know. I know. It's like, you know, that meme is like, you know, where the, like, the guy's turned over and the woman's in bed. And it's like, oh, I'll, I bet he's like thinking of females or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm actually thinking of like these little rare box drops. That's that's me. That's I'm, I'm actually like, oh, yeah, I had a psycho one. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to skip this dialogue just because I'll read it back on my own accord. Yeah, there keep was you interesting to... No, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but you said it for me. You said it for yeah, me. Essentially, essentially, it's, hey, we've made a new simulator. Go and do it. Okay. I'm here. I'm present. Well, this is new. I've definitely been yes, here once. This, yeah, this area, it was used for... I believe it might have been a battle map for some versions, possibly. Because I know Spaceship was definitely used for a battle map. So, so battle being what? Like PvP or...? Yeah, there is a PvP mode, yeah. Um, it's it's a little bit janky, like a lot of things in PSO, but it is, it's kind of funny to do as well. Um, yeah. I was actually doing it a few days ago, actually. Um, oh, it's, so wait, it's, it's, it's still than... active on... Oh, of course it is, because you select it when you set up the server, I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You literally scroll past yeah, it, yeah. don't you? Yeah. I'm going to get slapped. Oh, my God, slapped and paralysed in one go. Wow, welcome to episode right. two. Fantastic. Yeah, it's all right. I'm paralysed as well, so... <laughs> what is no, this so. area? This is like Crystal Maze. Oh, yeah, the map in Temple is absolutely horrendous sometimes. I was going to say, this is horrible. Not helped by PSO's camera as well, because the camera no, is no. on everything. I noticed <laughs> that when um, we fought the dragon on the spaceship map, like, after you kill it, your camera is, like, stuck to the floor. Or at least it was when I <laughs> killed it. Like, you just couldn't move it around at all. Like, I mean, you can't really in PSO anyway, but when I killed yeah. it, it was like, the camera was at my feet, and I was like, this is the most uncomfortable I've ever been. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and then you have to go through the warp to get back to Pioneer, and you can't judge where it is because the <laughs> camera is looking up at the sky. <laughs> I, I really like the fact that that dragon wasn't just like a like a reskin. Now, there was a lot of elements that were, of course, a reskin, but like there were some yeah, bits yeah. that are actually different, which is quite nice. I really like the gold dragon fight, to be honest. Um, I like that it makes clones of itself as well. I never actually got to, got to saw got to see that bit actually. To be fair. Okay. So you know, after it um, digs underground. Yeah, yeah. So what it'll do is it'll come back up, and when it comes back up, there'll be multiples of it. Oh wow! I saw it. Um, it sort of teleports as it walks towards you. Yeah, yeah. So it does that as well, but it also does make um, clones of itself as well. I remember the first time I fought a, a grass assassin back on the Dreamcast. Didn't even realise that after they like spray you with their web, that you can still sort of like look yeah, around yeah. and attack. I thought I was just paralysed, so I would just stand there and just take it like an absolute champion, like just <laughs> getting swung out by everything, not even defending myself. Just standing there, like, come on, what do you got? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm running around. I'm, I'm following you, and I think you're following me. So I'm just like running around in circles. <laughs> just running in circles. <laughs> yeah. it's like a dog chasing its tail. I didn't tell you the story about our cat. So this morning, I like come downstairs, getting ready for work, and like the living room is destroyed, like literally <laughs> upside down. And there's feathers. There's like a dead bird on the floor. He's just massacred this pigeon. Oh, and I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, how have you done this? Like, and why have you done this? I was like, of all the things that you could be doing right now, why are you doing this? Why have you chosen this option? No, literally, I'm, like, I'm about to go outside. Can you please not kill things? It's, do you not think that this game is like, it's such, when you explain what you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, it's such a hard sell to a new player. But yeah, yeah, it's the most like, same but different game I think I've ever played. Like, <laughs> The, the general rundown is like really really simple but oh definitely yeah yeah the more time you spend in it and the more you invest in it the more you get out of it so i've never actually fought this enemy at all what is this is this not so this is barbara so basically think they're all there yeah okay there's not much difference honestly there's a few new things it does but it is very very similar fight it's like a giant stingray oh what my it god it shoots it? rainbows oh my god Every now and again, it'll actually make these little rays on the raft that'll try and interrupt you. Okay. Um, you can actually hit them and knock them off the raft as well. I'm scared. Where is it? Oh, it'll no. Be here. Oh, okay. Oh, the rainbow balls are back. Oh, dear. And as yeah. much as it's like a similar boss to Daryl, actually, I think I prefer Barbara just because I prefer the way it looks, and I think there's enough interesting changes in the fight to make it different enough. Yeah, I completely agree from what I've seen so far. Like, one of my biggest gripes with Daryl was, like... I don't know, he spends the whole time trying to kill you, but then also has a power nap on the raft for about half an hour. Yeah, and allows yeah. you to smack the like living daylights out of him. I don't think I've dodged a single one of those yet. Does this have a second phase then, like to roll in? What if I walked into that again? <laughs> Absolute carnage, honestly. Oh, they do interrupt, don't they? God, they're horrible, those things. And yet again, not a single rainbow ball was dodged. This is a very cool area, though. It's like very like mines looking. Quite like yeah, I really like this. Honestly, this is just crazy. Look at all the trees down there, like people are probably watching this thinking like they just look like really pixelated broccoli's, mate. I don't really know what you're on about, <laughs> but they're my pixelated yeah, broccoli. That's, <laughs> that's all that matters. So the um, the sealed JSR that I keep mentioning, um, that is, it drops from an enemy that is most numerous in tower, so you kind of forced to run tower for it. So would that be for your Q Newell? Would that be the ideal weapon for that particular class? Is that was that just something you've been hunting because you like the idea of it? Um, so I would really like to have it. I mean, it is a really really strong weapon once you've unsealed it because you have to do more work once you found it. Um, it's a really, really nice weapon, but honestly, it's just because it's something I've hunted for years. Yeah. I hunted it originally on GameCube PSO. Like oh, when it released wow, and still had no luck. Never found it. What's uh, Do I dare even ask what the drop rate is? I bet it's ridiculous, isn't it? Well, it must be, clearly. So, so it's from a mini boss. So in normal runs, if you're playing offline, you'd only get one of these enemies every run. If you play tower and you're online, you can get a few per run usually. But the drop rate is one in 12,500. Oh my word. 
Wow. And, and to unseal it, what, what's the criteria for that? You have to kill, I believe it's about 23,000 enemies with it equipped. I don't know why I'm killing these, because I've got, I mean, destroyed the robot there. One in 20, how many, sorry? Uh, it's about 23,000 enemies. 20, oh, 23,000. I thought you were like, yeah. oh yeah, just like 23 enemies of us. Too bad. 23,000, yeah, that'll, that'll do yeah. it. That'll take you some time. So there's a reason why people are, even after 20 years, are still playing this game, and it's not because they like it, it's because oh, they're trying to unseal yeah. stuff all the time. They're still trying to find it. <laughs> and what happened to you there? So this rod, um, it has a special ability on it. So if you keep it equipped for 10 minutes, um, you can use it from your inventory, and what it'll do is it'll drain your health to 1, but it'll refill your TP. Oh my word. I thought so you just had a heart attack or something. I was like, what on earth? <laughs> Yeah, that attack, that attack every time, without fail. Now this attack's really, really fun. You know how I mentioned how he can clone himself? Yeah. Um, now, now imagine three of them doing it at the same time. Yeah, no, I don't understand how you would even survive that. So this, like, when he jumps in the air, like, my camera is just like... It just turns into a dwarf. Yeah, it's like, you don't need to see the floor for any reason, do you? <laughs> yeah. like, no, like, the floor <laughs> jumping up to hit you. No, I don't need to see that you at all. You no. don't need Why spatial need awareness, do you, by any chance? I feel so bad for you having to drag my ass through this on the basis that I'm doing 70 to 100 damage per shot. Oh my god, there's two. Okay, all right then. Yes. So the way this works is one of these will be a fake clone. You'll probably notice when you start attacking it because you'll seem to do way more damage because it has less health. I really gave myself a confidence boost there. I was like, wow, my guy's really, really pulled this one out of the bag. Yeah, this is... I'm having a terrible time. <laughs> is there still two of them? Or is... oh, right. oh, okay, there is, yeah. Yeah, I think the real one's on really low health, I think, so it should be about dead. Yeah, you just you keep doing your thing, I'll just be over here healing myself. Ah, there we go. Well, I'd like to take some credit for that, but I really don't think I can, to be honest. <laughs> so is this your first time seeing this? I've, no, so I've been on, is it Mountain and Seaside? I've done literally oh, once okay. for like five minutes, but I don't remember hardly any of it, to be honest. So this is, yeah, I suppose okay. you could say virtually completely new to me. Uh, it's one of the more picturesque areas, I think, in the game, to be fair. Oh, definitely, yeah. It's definitely one of my favourite areas, this. So did you start out with the um, the Dreamcast version of PSL then originally? Yeah, I did. So I'm, but I mainly played version one. So there's a lot of stuff oh, that okay. I literally haven't even seen. Um, I mean, I come to think about it now, version one. So I've actually still got version one in a case like behind me for the Dreamcast. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that, you know, like actually playing this now that you realize how rough around the edges version one really was. Um, yeah. I like, went back and bought it later, um, just to try, to try it out because I'd never played it before. Oh, it's and surreal. And it was surprising how rough it felt, to be honest. Yeah. What I love about this area, um, so this area and Control Tower, the music here is super chill. It's probably one of my favourite tracks in the entire game. But it's one of the most dangerous areas in the game, particularly for Control Tower. So it lulls you into this false sense of security. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these traps are lethal. Why are there so many traps on a beach, please? Get away the tourists. Yeah, it must be. It's like shark control. We don't use nets anymore, we just use traps. It's got bombs everywhere. <laughs> well, they are terrifying to look at these. Oh, they do quite literally just run away. Okay. I think it's when they get to low health, they just try running away from you. It's like they start beef and they're like, come on, you want some? And then you start fighting back. I'm like, whoa, 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 chill, chill. Like, whoa, he's got heat. <laughs> Also, can you imagine a game coming out now where every time you press a certain button, it pauses the whole lobby and they have to watch an animation for like six to seven yeah, seconds? Yeah. Like, can you ever imagine that working now? People just wouldn't have the, the like concentration span to even sit through that. But back then, it just worked. Yeah, yeah. It's a really strange decision looking back at it now. Like, yeah, we're just going to pause, essentially pause the entire game for everyone playing. Yeah. Animations that might not even be relevant. <laughs> <laughs> it may not even hit what you're trying to hit. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd love to eventually make a compilation of all the times that people hit a photon blast by accident. I think uh, that I would do it all be. The time on stream. I, I know. <laughs> I think that would just be like one of the funniest videos, especially like because some of them are just so out of context as well. Like you'd just be walking in the hallway and someone would just pop a photon blast for no reason. So, how did you actually find um, Blue Burst then? 
So I actually didn't know about Blue Burst until I saw a video. I was just like sifting through YouTube and I saw uh, like an old video. This guy, I'm pretty sure you might even have seen the video. It's like a Dreamcast long play of like Fantasy okay. Star Online. It's a guy called Ricky C, I think, or something. He does a lot of like older retro games. And one person okay, commented yeah. saying, like, I still play this online now. And I'm like, Wait, what? Like, ha what? Like, am I missing something here? And then someone had, had already put the comment for me, like, how, why, like, where? And they literally okay. just, like, typed it in. And I literally, I was like, oh, this is going to be ridiculous to install. It's going to be, like, so hard. I'm going to need to install, like, yeah, really yeah. old hardware and all that sort of stuff. And I literally installed it. And because the download's so small, I was like, wait, I'm just, like, in Fantasy Star Online, a game that I've not played in, like, 20 years. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, and at, at, like at the time, I I mean, life was, like, totally different. Like, we were a lot, a lot less settled back then, so didn't really have time to, like, jump into it, like, fully. Um, okay. But, yeah, I mean, I'm so glad I did because I actually, without sounding like you're putting all your eggs in, like, one basket, outside of Fantasy Star, other than, like, a couple of MMOs here and there, I really don't know what I would play. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, just because I really, this is going to sound like like really, really deep, but I don't really like the whole, like the way that the gaming industry has gone these days. Everything is very like microtransactional and I feel like games yeah, are, yeah. they're just made to make money. And I know that like makes no sense whatsoever because that's the whole point, but yeah, they're, yeah. Not, they're not, they're, they're not like built around players anymore they're not like built because people love making games they're just like yeah we need you to hit this deadline make this amount of money and release it to this many people and if you don't we're going to pull out that's basically what gaming is now oh yeah, yeah. i think pso is from definitely from a very different time yeah for me it's just a game i just keep coming back to for some reason um i've, I've tried loads of other games since online i mean i, I still play ngs as well but for me, there, there's just something about PSO where it's, it's just so addictive. And for some reason, I just don't get sick of the loop. Even though I've played this game for thousands of hours now, for some reason, I just keep coming back to it. And I, just, I can't stay away from it. Do you know, it's funny you should say that because I was trying to actually pinpoint the other day what makes this game so interesting because okay, as much as to me, as much as I can appreciate the graphics being more than just graphics, because it's more of an art style, like people look at it and go, well, the graphics are old, but I really enjoy kind of like the art style of PSO. But I think, yeah, yeah. I think the colors of the game do a lot for my brain. Like if I look at a pack of mobs that spawn in and it, there's little green triangles around them, I just want to shoot them. Like I just <laughs> think something chemically in my brain goes, you need to shoot that, that enemy and just keep doing that all the time. Oh my God, there's three traps. Oh my god, what what has happened? It's I feel like, like I just like I wander <laughs> off and then get myself into trouble and then I'm like, can you please help me? I feel like this is what this is. Yeah, so this is Gal Griffin. Oh my word, that's cool. That's very cool. I, I love Gal's design. It's such an interesting looking monster. I'm actually terrified to move. What is that? That's a tornado. Okay, let's let's avoid that. Yeah, so the tornadoes, they will track you slightly, so they will follow you a little bit. Um, the annoying thing about the tornadoes is they'll keep hitting you while you stood, so you'll just continue to take damage from them. Oh, wow. Okay. So once he's on the ground, has he got any like specific attacks you need to be aware of? Is it very much like dragon territory would just watch his feet? Um, yeah, so he'll, he'll start charging this. <laughs> what? The fuck? Excuse my French, but what is that? Yeah, so um, Gal Griffin likes lightning, so he does a lot of lightning burst attacks. Oh my god, he's like galloping around. The one thing I don't really like about Gal Griffin is that he does spend a lot of time just flying away from you and wasting time. I was going to say, I've just spent like 10 minutes running towards him, he's just flown in the other direction. Oh, please, give me a break. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, sometimes the galloping's really irritating because he'll yeah. just do it constantly over and over again. Oh, he does, doesn't he? Why well, he's just done it again? Well, at least I'm keeping the floor warm, I suppose. What is that? <laughs> yeah, the, the damage on that is pretty disgusting. That is insane. I've got to say, though, I love the boss theme for this as well. The music is so good. The arena's wicked, though. You can see, like, the lightning strikes in the background as well. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so this is the seabird. So this is the last area in episode two. What on earth are these things? Oh my god, they've got tentacles. Oh, it's trying to whip me. Oh, there's another one. Okay, all right. I see what we're doing here. We're boxed in. Okay, all right then. Okay. Yeah, seabird likes doing stuff like this. Oh no, this is not ideal. Wow, that's no. That's some like Dark Souls tactics. Like, that's horrible. Yeah, you literally have nowhere to go. I was going to say, the box you in both sides. Is that an invisible robot? Well, yes, it is. Yeah. Oh great. <laughs> okay. I see where this. Uh, I see where this level's taken us now. So we've we've yeah. hit a new low. Okay. There is. There's a couple of rooms in Seabed though where you can actually see them a little bit easier. So there's a few rooms that have water on the floor, and they've actually made it so the reflections show up in the water. I had fun with PSU really, but I think for me, PSO will always be the one I keep coming back to. Yeah, yeah. Do you still play it from time to time? Oh my lord, please. Can we do away with these invisible robots? <laughs> um, yeah, I play it now and again. I mean, obviously, I do videos on it occasionally, but I mean, I would say I play it maybe once every couple of weeks, honestly. It, it's very much just an as and when game. Oh my god. Was that a crit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That man just ended my whole existence there and then. Okay, so as if all these enemies weren't bad enough, let's put chainsaws in the walls as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, because reasons. Oh, you can see reflection as well. Oh, and Yeah, fish. it's a really nice effect, honestly. Wow. I'm yeah, so it's meant like an undersea research facility, I think. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I, I really like Seabird. I'm possibly the only person that's ever played this to enter the level called Seabed and be amazed that there's fish. <laughs> I never even thought of that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, this guy is chasing me. These Dell Biters are horrible. These are terrifying. These are probably some of the scariest enemies here. At least you don't get that horrible buzzing sound when those nests drop in episode one. Yeah, that, that's one of the sounds I hate in PSO. Um, oh. it, just, it, it always hurts my ears for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, it sends a shiver down my spine, and not a good one. <laughs> Am I even going the right way? I feel like I'm leading the pack here, which is definitely the wrong decision. Okay, the prime example. <laughs> what did I just say? Right. Where am I going? Am I, have I just walked the opposite way? Yeah, you have. Yeah. You just walked back through the trap again. <laughs> you see, what did I say to you when we were going to record this? I said, I'm probably going to do something wrong. I'm going to run the wrong way. And you're just going to be like babysitting. I bet you've been stood in this tunnel thinking like, where is he going? Like, what? What is he doing? What? The, the boss teleport is right here. Oh, my word. What is going on? What earth is that noise? That's the boss talking to you. <laughs> oh. What is this, please? I recognise the sword. Yeah, the sword's pretty iconic. Okay, why do I feel like I'm going to get destroyed already? Olga Flow. Yeah, that, that's about normal for this guy, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, this right. guy has basically no chill whatsoever. I say relax. What is wrong with this guy? The problem with this guy is that he just doesn't really stay still. He doesn't, does he? He's like constantly moving around. Very cool boss, though. I like the, I like the design of him, that's for sure. Yeah, I think he's a brilliant design, honestly. And what's happening here? It's just like second phase or something? Okay, what's this, please? I actually haven't seen him do attack for a long time. Oh, cause. no! That's because you probably <laughs> killed him by now and you're not babysitting me the whole time. No, what is this? Yeah, I actually haven't seen him do this for probably a couple of years, honestly. <laughs> Did I just dodge all of them? Am I good at this game now? My rotation is like, get hit, heal, heal, get hit, heal, <laughs> heal. It's like, there's no room for attacking in the slightest. What is this? What is this? This does not look good. Oh, dear Lord. Okay. And we're running. And we're running. We're still running. What is this? No, my ass. Oh, we're good. Okay. I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't think I've hit him in about 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank the Lord, please don't let there be a phase two, please. Would now be a bad time to oh, tell you. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I can fight him if he's like this. As long as he remains like lifeless and limp, that'll be that's fine. Yeah, second phase. 
Yeah. Second phase is him just staying on the ground just doing nothing. sleeping. <laughs> yeah, so I could, I could fight him like this easily. Oh, dear lord. Well, here we go. Yeah, so I can't guarantee I will survive this either. <laughs> this can't be worse than what we just experienced, surely. It, it's far worse. <laughs> oh, no. This is so cool, though. My word. What's the two things floating behind? Are they like separate enemies or what? Oh my god, what they are they? They are what I'd basically describe as his mug. I mean, I am tickling this guy at best. No, please behave yourself. Oh yeah, my so that, that word. one-shot me. Wow. So for this part here, he actually turns one player into Flowen, which is a character from the story. So you can see he's turned me into Flowen. Oh, that's crazy. Why does he do that? Is it just... Can you do anything with it or not? So, basically, he gets very, very angry. And if you hit him with the wrong element, it hurts me. Oh, wow. Problem is, you don't know what element he is, though. So yeah. you have to basically experiment with different attributes to figure out what he's weak to. Oh, yeah. So that's hitting you as well, isn't it? Yeah, okay, fair. Uh, so you can't attack good. when you're like... Okay, what am I doing here, bro? I'm just walking into attacks. Oh my lord! Yeah, I've, I've got to say that using a force for this was not the player. <laughs> you know, my perception of episode two is not in good stead because of you already. If this is what you're putting me through in my first entry to episode two, then I I'm not sure if I'm going to return, to be honest. Please go away. <laughs> Please go away. Do not stand on me. I'm going to the player again, honestly. <laughs> I think we're going to struggle here, I can't lie. Yeah, he is a very, very rough boss. I think the problem is he keeps shifting elements to to ones that are bad for me to fight against. There's also like a load of boulders now which are in the way and yeah. so many different things that are coming up on the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is extremely awkward fight this sometimes. Oh, that's very funny. It's one of those fights where it either seems to go absolutely terribly or really smooth. There's no in-between. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm just keeping the floor warm at this point. I really am. <laughs> this could not be going worse for me if it tried. I mean, I, don't, I think the likelihood of us actually finishing this is probably fairly slim. Yeah, I think yeah. if he stays Dark Element, we're not we're not going to be able to do it because <laughs> um, obviously I can't use Megadon on a boss, so oh. it's... To be fair though, for an experience, I'm happy to call it there because that was really, <laughs> really cool.